Do you regularly experience the standard post meal crush? Do you need a pick me up like mid morning coffee or do you feel like you need a nap just one or two hours after lunch? There is a high chance that those energy crushes are due to your diet. I could just tell you to stop eating sugar and carbs so that you avoid glucose spikes and you'll be fine. But there is more to it than that and you won't necessarily need to give up carbs altogether. Why do we feel tired? If our post-meal sluggishness is due to the food we eat, this is what happens in our body. When we ingest sugar and carbs, and more generally foods with a high glycemic load, they deliver a large amount of sugar to our bodies in a short amount of time, causing a glucose spike. The immediate response we feel is a rapid increase in energy, which unfortunately decreases even faster. Once our body has to do the additional work of storing away the extra sugar in our blood. That's when we feel tired and sluggish. Why are glucose spikes bad? These spikes in our blood sugar levels are not just annoying because they mess up with our energy levels, but they are also bad for our health. A glucose spike triggers the release of insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas with the job of capturing the extra sugar in our bloodstream and bringing it to normal levels. Insulin helps glucose enter cells in our muscles, fat and liver, where it's used for energy. Exposing our body to high levels of glucose over a long period of time can make us insulin resistant and disrupt our metabolic health. What happens if we become insulin resistant? Insulin resistance occurs when cells in our muscles, fat and liver stop responding to insulin and can't take up glucose from our blood anymore. As a result, our pancreas produces more and more insulin to help glucose enter our cells. Eventually though, our pancreas wears out and can't produce enough insulin anymore, causing our blood glucose levels to rise to pre-diabetic and eventually diabetic levels. Insulin resistance is one of the biggest drivers of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, dementia, depression, infertility, and the list goes on. How can we avoid glucose spikes? The easiest way to avoid glucose spikes is by eliminating any type of sugar and carbs from our diet. However, that wouldn't be a viable solution for many of us. So let's see how we can avoid those spikes while still eating some carbs. Just a quick note. I have created a PDF with all the tips that are about to follow and you can download it for free from the link in the description below. Eat a glucose-friendly breakfast. If we avoid spiking our blood glucose with our breakfast, it will be easier to avoid spikes throughout the day. The easiest way to do so is by eating a savory breakfast, such as some eggs with vegetables or, if you're okay with that, leftovers from the night before. After doing some testing, I personally avoid a glucose spike from my breakfast by simply having a hard-boiled egg before my oats with fruit and yogurt. A green or brown smoothie is also a good option, as long as we add protein to it and a very small amount of fruit, unless they are berries. Something we should certainly avoid is fruit juices or smoothies, since when we strip the fruit of its fiber, we concentrate its fructose, which is really like drinking sugar. If you want to have sugar in the morning, make sure to eat it with protein and fat. Full fat yogurt, nuts or nut butters are great options. You can also have fruit after a full glucose friendly meal. Include all the food groups in each meal. Try to incorporate all food groups in each one of your meals protein, fat and carbs, and make sure to have lots of fiber as well. This ensures that we get enough nutrients, minerals and vitamins throughout the day and makes it easier to avoid glucose spikes without even thinking about it. The ingredients used in a balanced meal should be those that provide our body with the energy it needs to function properly. Eat the food in the right order. Once we have all the food groups on our plate, we should eat them in the right order. Fiber first, then protein, fat, starches, and finally sugar. For example, suppose we decide to cook baked salmon with potatoes and salads. We should start our meal by eating the salad first, preferably by adding vinegar. We will talk more about this later. Then it's time to eat the salmon, which counts as protein and fat in this case. And finally, the potatoes, which are starches. 
I understand this is difficult to do when we prepare a meal bowl and all the ingredients are cut into small pieces and all mixed up. We don't have to go and fish them separately. But apart from making sure we have included all the food groups in the meal, with the vegetables being in the bigger quantities, we could even have some green leafy vegetables before the meal. This brings us to the next point. Add a green starter to each meal. This is the easiest way to get more vegetables into our diet and that important nutrients and fiber to help our digestive system work better. We can start with a small serving of leafy greens and if we wish, add a few more ingredients like seeds or a bit of cheese. If you find washing green leaves to be an obstacle to making this starter, try my already wash ready to eat greens in a bag. Or if you prefer to avoid plastic, buy tougher greens like kale or spinach that you can store following these instructions up here to make them last for up to 10 days or simply wash them as soon as you get home and store them in the fridge in a jar with water to keep them fresh longer put some clothes on your carbs whenever we decide to have carbs such as toasted bread or fruit let's make sure to add some fiber protein and fat to coat them for example, we can add avocado and egg to our toast or eat our fruit with cheese, yogurt, nuts or nut butter. The coating on our carbs reduces how much and how quickly glucose is absorbed by our bodies. Moreover, eating carbs alone causes a rapid fluctuation in the hunger hormone ghrelin, making us even hungrier in a just short amount of time. time. Snack savory and eat sweets for dessert. If we need to have a snack between meals, it's better to have a savory one over a sweet one. A savory snack that is also whole food most probably won't create a spike. Ultra processed options, however, they would. So if you thought you had a green light for a daily bag of chips, I'm afraid it's not the case. Examples of savory snacks are nuts, cheese, crunchy veggies with hummus, or some other dip. We can also have tossed bread with one too, but we should add protein, fat, and possibly veggies on top. I also like to make sweet potato toasts. I cut the sweet potatoes into slices and bake them for 40 minutes in total, turning them midway. I usually prepare two sweet potatoes at once and store them in the fridge. When I want one, I just pop it into the toaster. They are not crunchy like breads, but I'm personally okay with that. If during the day we feel like a cookie or a piece of cake, we can enjoy it but let's make sure to eat it after a balanced meal, eating in a way that won't spike our glucose. Have vinegar before you eat. Studies have shown that vinegar, specifically the acetic acid contained in vinegar, helps to avoid a glucose spike if ingested before a meal. Jason Chaspet recommends drinking up to one tablespoon of vinegar dissolved in a big glass of water before meals especially those that contain carbs. When drinking vinegar, we should use a straw in order to protect our teeth because the acid of the vinegar can erode the enamel, which is a superficial protective layer of our teeth. If we are trying this for the first time, we can start with just one teaspoon of vinegar and slowly add more. One tablespoon is equivalent to three teaspoons. If the thought of drinking vinegar grosses you out, you can add it to your green starter instead. This is an easy trick that can also be used in restaurants. Theoretically, we can use any type of vinegar because all of them contain acetic acid. However, balsamic vinegar, especially the denser ones, contain sugar, so it is better to avoid them. The best choice would be unfiltered apple cider vinegar. Move after you eat. It has largely been proven that movement is beneficial for our health. And a little movement after our meals is a great aid in avoid glucose spikes. When we do a few minutes of exercise or go for a 10 minute walk, our muscles and our entire body need fuel to create the energy needed for the effort. Glucose is our body's favorite energy source because it's the quickest to use. So since the glucose in our blood increases after we eat, when we do some exercise after our meals, our body will take the glucose it needs directly from the easiest available source, our bloodstream. So within one hour after eating, we can try to do some type of activity. It can be going for a 10 minute walk, dancing, or doing some bodyweight exercises. 
Doing sewn chores and cleaning around the house can also be beneficial. Sleep well and avoid stress. Sleep works wonders for our bodies. When I wore a continuous glucose monitor, I could see that my average blood glucose levels were higher when I was sleep deprived, and even worse when I was going through stressful periods. In both cases, I would get more cravings throughout the day. A quick note on sodas marketed as zero. It's true that they don't contain sugar and they won't spike our glucose. But they do contain artificial sweeteners that can alter the composition of our intestinal bacteria with possible negative consequences. How can we know if we're experiencing glucose spikes? The only way to know if we're experiencing glucose spikes is by testing our blood. The cheapest way is to get the ready machine at the pharmacy and prick our finger two hours after meals. The easiest way is to get a continuous glucose monitor that will collect our data minute by minute and use an app to display the data in a graph. The good thing about doing our own testing is that we collect our personal data from our body. For instance, some people might experience spiking glucose levels after eating an apple, but we might not. So if we love apples, we don't need to deprive ourselves of something we enjoy. Also, some foods promoted as healthy may not be that healthy for us if we know for sure that they are actually spiking our glucose levels. If you feel like you want to do more for your health, you might want to check out this video here where I talk about the healthy eating trends that I think are worth trying.